is the Shinobi 2 the best monitor for the Canon R5 Mark II and the R5C? This monitor right here got hit with a lot of negative reviews, but that was before the latest firmware update. Now, it could be the best option out there. We will dive into why it might not be for everyone and put it to the test on both the R5C and the R5 Mark II. If you're looking for a lightweight, high quality outdoor monitor, and no, I'm not talking about my Apple Vision Pro right here, this is the video for you. The biggest reason to upgrade the Shinobi 2 is the camera control. But right now, the main complaint is that the Shinobi 2 only works with Sony camera. Nani? When I first got it, it kind of worked with my Canon R5 Mark II, but I couldn't control my white balance and I lost the camera feed every time I left the camera control. Thankfully, the firmware update fixed all that. It's like they designed this thing specifically for my Canon R5 Mark II. Now, let me tell you what I'm trying to achieve with this setup right here. I shot VR 180 in 8K Canon RAW LT, either at 30 frames a second or 60 frames a second, mostly outdoor. So I need gear that can, that are compact, lightweight, and doesn't suck up too much power or draw too much attention. This Shinobi 2 right here is half the weight of the old Shinobi or any other Ultimo monitor, making it a perfect for creator on the move like me. Plus, it's fairness, so it won't mess up with your audio. A big bonus. An external display need to be brighter than my own camera monitor. And the 1500 nit HDR display on the Shinobi 2 is so bright, it's way clearer than my camera monitor, especially outdoors. Before the Shinobi 2, I stuck to my own camera monitor because most external one didn't support 4K DCI input. And let's be real, you can't rely on a 1080p feed for critical focus, especially when working with the menu focus to fish islands right here. It's tough even for the pros, but the Shinobi 2 changed that. Shinobi 2 is a 1080p monitor, but it accepts a 4K DCI signal, not just 4K UHD. So when you zoom in, it gives you that full 4K signal, letting you see much sharper detail. And with the Canon R5 Mark II, for 15x zoom, the Shinobi 2 can zoom two more times on top of that, giving you a massive 60x zoom. Combined with that three-level peaking system on the 4K DCI signal, focusing become way easier now. Another feature that makes this monitor so travel friendly is power delivery. The Shinobi 2 can power both the monitor and the Canon R5 Mark II with just one single USB-C PD power connection right here. It's a lifesaver, especially since shooting in 8K RAW, drain a lot of batteries. I also use this battery attachment right here to power the monitor with the same USB PD V-mount battery right here I use for the camera. I'm using the ZG Sin 160W, which not only giving me all day power, but also tell me exactly when to swap the battery. But let's talk about the best part, camera control. With the same USB-C connection right here, you get full control of your Canon R5 Mark II. It reads your camera stack as you see right here, and you control setting like the white balance, shutter speed, aperture, and ISO, all from the monitor. There's no touch focus just yet, but I mainly shoot with the manual lens, so that's not an issue for me. And good news is, Ultimo say touch focus is coming soon. And just like every Ultimo monitor, the Shinobi 2 right here comes with all the Pro 2 that you expected. Accurate exposure chart, false color, zebra, focus peaking, social media overlay, anamorphic squeeze, and more. Ultimo is known for delivering this feature at a quality level that professional camera operator trusts, and the Shinobi 2 is no exception. So yeah, the Shinobi 2 is a lightweight, super bright, and power both my monitor and my camera. And honestly, I can't live without it now because of the confidence it gives me when nailing focus. There are a couple of drawbacks though. First, the Shinobi 2 only support 4K DCI up to 30 frames a second. If you are shooting at 60 frames a second like I do, you will need to nail your focus at 30 frames a second and then switch it back to 60 frames a second. Not ideal, but workable. Second, the HDI locking mechanism right here 
only work with the expensive Automo HDMI cable. My regular HDMI cable right here are too chunky, so I have to take that thing off to plug this thing in. Now, what about using it with the Canon R5C right here? Here's the thing, it does not really work with the R5C or any of the Canon's cinema series camera, including the brand new C80s. It recognizes the camera, but you don't get camera control. To make matter worse, the USB PD power isn't strong enough to let the R5C shoot in 8K or use the dual fisheye lens. So, if you are thinking of using this with the R5C, C400, or C80, this isn't the monitor for you. I would recommend using the Shogun Ultra right here which is my favorite Pro Monitor, but that is a tutorial for another day. So there you have it. The Ultimo Shinobi 2 is becoming an essential part of my outdoor shooting kit for the Canon R5 Mark II. External monitor used to feel like a hassle, and I normally stuck to my Apple Vision Pro right here for most shooting, but now I'm glad to have this in my bag. I still use my Vision Pro to check the 3D quality though. Light camera feed to 3D quality into Apple Vision Pro is coming. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell. If you want to know why I switched to the Canon R5 Mark II for VR 180, check out my in-depth review right here. And if you are interested in the 8K immersive content that I have shot with this setup, download my new Vision OS app, Spatial Film, right here for your Apple Vision Pro. See ya.